That'll do it. Checking something out real quick. I'm having a little bit of trouble with the. There we go. Okay. I don't know if it recorded and showed all of it, but... Okay. But I did get it figured out. <clears throat> Once this guy was at 16, we had to use the... <clears throat> this... to damage... the peasant... seven times and use the last shot at him. So this should work. There. Because then he'd use the whole thing, eight on him. I was always one short on damage. Ooh, another runestone. that do, I wonder. Spawn three copies of a Death Wish unit on the battlefield, then destroy them. Ooh, nice. I think I only have... I don't have actually any Death Wish units by default. I have the, uh, the ones that come with the, <clears throat> with the war, war wagon, is it? Because that spawns the light infantry guys. But I don't have them on their own. There it is. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. What else is in here? Oh, can I afford to build something? Okay. 3,500, 1,500. That's, nope, we got the palisade left. Oh, well, a pitfall trap's better. Damage by three. Crushing traps better, but I don't like that. Rivian Onager is pretty nice. It always does that. Okay. Map. What's happening here, crushed tent? Milady, we've searched the enemy camp. The tents are spattered in blood and shields lie scattered on the grass. But there's no sign of the bodies. We also found a map tucked inside one of the chests. It appears the Nilf Guardians buried their regimental safe as if they'd expected danger and knew not whether they'd return. Show me the map. Let's 
side of the town. There. Going. I'm trying to go. Yep. Count Cobbler, you douchebag. Hang on a sec. Westerly Bridge. The Blackclads quickly realized they were in no position to control all of Angren. Instead, they focused their energies on strategically important locations. Inns, watchtowers, and bridges. They fought with the Lyrian army on one of them. Westerly Bridge. Who are the victims, you ask? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Nice! Destroy all enemy units, use your leader's ability. Puzzle special rules, sort and battle custom deck. Damage should be favorites. Fifteens and tens. Boost an ally by four and give it an armor. Guys, right? Uh, this is gonna be easy. What was, was duh? Pissing in the mort? Oh, he's dead. It's about as easy as it gets. That's done. That's the smell of happiness. Ooh, marching orders. That was a dope card. I'll think about you, Marching Orders. That is a really nice card. Alright, so I've been... Had to have been here, right? have a treasure map for something that looks like that? I 
It's probably here. See anything else like that yet? It's this whole area up here. I'm gonna go here, hang on. Make sure I'm not missing it. All that stuff up there. There's absolutely no way to get there from here, from the bridge. You guys still doing okay up here? Side door. Can't get to it. Okay. Dum -dum 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 -dum. I'll fast travel here so I can check out this area again real quick. Majesty, are you well? Yes, <clears throat> yes, but the stench. This stinky in this swamp. Okay, well, I guess that treasure's not here. It looks like that could be the the remains of <clears throat> that gate thing. Meave stood waiting while her scouts cut through the tangled branches and it. roots that had overgrown the trail through the swamp. Suddenly, a soldier doubled over and began to retch blood. The same symptoms soon afflicted others in her ranks. A potent poison, was the medic's verdict. It seemed all those who'd fallen ill had shared a tent. One night, they'd chatted about an obelisk they'd destroyed and the group of incensed peasants who cursed them for it. Fearing for their lives, the footman had gone to a local herbalist. She'd brewed them a potion to ward off black magic. Alas, the concoction had proved poisonous, while the herbalist had vanished without a trace. Hmm. Bitch. Happily, Isbel concocted an antidote in time to deliver the soldiers from a certain and agonizing death. Good. The mage explained their misfortune had not issued from a dark, corrupt force, but from simple human wickedness. Her calming voice and gentle smile lifted the soldiers' spirits. Trusting in her care, they soon wholly forgot the so-called curse. Phew. Let's do curses. A little fast travel point. Got like skilligan boats here. What is this? Maybe Nilf Guardian longboats. I am to find out what he is. rode at the front, her eyes fixed on the ground, and thus spotted the pit masked by leaves and branches. She tugged hard on her reins and steered her mount to the south. Alas, the cavalryman behind her did not follow her lead. Leaves rustled, boughs snapped, and the horseman crashed to the pit's bottom, snapping his neck. Moments later, it was clear who'd set the trap when the forest came alive and a cry rang out. Oh boy. Nilfgaardian snares. 
Meep's father used to tell her that a true soldier does not set traps, that pits are the tools of brigands, poachers, and cowards. It seems fathers in Nilfgaard teach no such lesson. Meef spurred on her horse, jumping over the sharpened stakes before her, and headed for the pitfalls architects. Short battle. Every turn on turn start, damage the highest power enemy unit by five. If its power is an even number, ouch. So turn start tree and ambush. I like that. Mine now. Over if your allied units. Without hesitation. choice. Ugh. Interesting. Again and again and again. Order! Suffering for what? <laughs> that ambush was freaking crazy nuts. Very good. Cheap as a melee. Oh, well, they're gone. <laughs>
I can play him. He just doesn't have to do his thing. My prescription, a bit of bloodletting. Ah. Do 115 in one card there, buddy. Retreat! Fall back! You're dead. Caught between Lyrian Hammer and Skelligan Stone, Nilfgaard was shattered, destroyed. The victors now stood eyeing each other. These islanders were not like those Meave had met before. They wore no armor and carried no shields. At their fore stood a man as stout as an ox and bald as an ancient ghoul. His hmm. men called him Arnjolf, the patricide. I thank you for your aid, Arnjolf, said Meave, extending a hand. Eid, she says. Eid, do you hear that, mates? <laughs> the Skelligers exchanged glances, then erupted in roaring laughter. Not here to help you, not at all. We're after killing. Join me and you shall have your fill. Join you, since? <laughs> Just who the hell are you? Meave, Queen of Rivia and Lyria. Meave, Arnjolf said, his tone sobering. I know the name. Mm -hmm. Let me Goodman call ye bold. Praise your courage to the high heaven. So be it. We'll follow you into fire, wench. Just let us taste of blood. Grant hell us yeah. a death worthy of heroes. Meave couldn't help but smile. Then nodded to accept. Nice. The Lyrians stepped aside as tattooed warriors joined their ranks. Ha! Diggity! More skeletons. He's fighting a bear for God's sake. He's fighting a harpy. Sweet. Some wild ass skeletons.
That's okay. It's not great. That I like. I mean, they're okay. Then I. I don't ever let the enemy put down a lot of units. I'll just hang on to them. I knew there were skeleton longboats. all kinds of stuff up here to get at though. But the path forward is here so we'll go all the way around down through all this junk and then come back through this camp and up here. A little weird circle in the woods. Swampy woods. Attacked by skeletons here. Look at this place. The scouts rode at the fall, with me right behind them. Oh, gross. Their task to find safe passage for the rest of the force. One among them probed for the quagmire's depth, a pole of five L's in hand. Suddenly, all heard a loud clang. The scouts dismounted, then heaved a bronze statue from the mire. Once it was cleaned of slime and muck, Meave instantly recognized its elven handiwork. Mm -hmm. The sculpture was exceedingly well preserved, save one detail. Someone had removed its face, leaving a black hole in its stead. Search the environs, ordered Meave. Amongst some brambles, they discovered the entrance to a vast tomb. Its doors had been torn open. On the ground before them lay scattered bones, some yellowed with age, others fresh, cracked and tattered from having been gnawed. Hmm, monsters. Oh, we're not gonna leave it behind, we Eve gotta go in. Eve stood silent and contemplating at the tomb's threshold. Then torch in hand, she entered and waded into fetid waters. Her Yuck. soldiers followed close, arms at the ready, a nervous sweat on their brows. Frescoes on the tomb walls depicted Angren swamps and the beasts that prowled them. Two words were inscribed over the largest of the horrors. Gvern Iker. The bloody mistress, Barnabas Beckenbauer whispered. Suddenly, a roar thundered from deeper inside the tomb. There she is. Neve turned from the frescoes to see monstrous eyes blazing in the dark. Hey, monsters. Elven ruins. Holy shit, 250. To whom had this half-sunken ivy shrewn tomb belonged? No one in recent memory could say for sure. The elves who built the structure had fled Angren centuries past. The locals now only knew it as the final resting place for a great warrior and defender of the marshes against an ancient evil. Eliminate the ancient fiend. Well, that's going to be hard to do. Special rule short in battle.
every two turns, banish a random enemy unit and spawn a phantasm. I don't want any ghosts. That's good. No. 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 Kill the ghost, it hurts that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Could hurt. Your kneecaps broken. Abolish to your command. It's not too late to walk away. Oh, 
Well, I win, but... I think that's the last of them. But keep your weapons at the ready. In her torch's feeble glow, the queen examined the beast's corpse. She could not help but to shudder in disgust. Perhaps it's better... She thought... ...that we faced it in the dark. At the corridor's end, they found a closed door. Ooh, Elven Sword. Before any could draw near, it opened with a crash. Beyond lay a circular room. Light shone through a hole in the chamber's ceiling, illuminating a stone pedestal and the sword that lay upon it. The air in here, it crackles with magic, whispered Isbel. Meave gripped the blade's hilt. A soothing warmth filled her arms and spread across her shoulders. Her tired muscles ceased trembling. Her fingers, stiff as sticks, relaxed. She brandished her prize, the air hissing as the blade sliced through it. Nice. She then nodded approvingly. The reward had been worth the risk. Ooh, hot diggity daffodil. Barnabas Beckenbauer, a gleam in his eye, asked to look at the unsheathed sword. The gnome studied the Quillians intently, having spotted an inscription there. Can you say what's written there? Asked Meave. Yes, uh, perhaps. They're clear, the words. Their meaning, not necessarily so. Wieldeth me, and loseth not hope amongst the blood-red waters. Hmm. It sounds like a riddle, but I've no wish to solve. We should move on, and quickly so. Hmm. I like cool magic swords. Yeah, let's also see what that new card does. Shuffle an ally into the deck and play two cards from your deck. That's nice, but I like, I really like moving people around and doing nine damage. Pretty cool though. That's kind of neat too. Anything buildable yet? Nope. It's 3,500 wood and that's 4,000 wood, right? Once I get to 3,500, I might as well wait till 4,000, right? Yep. Majesty, a wealth of golden coins sits beneath these ruins. We can try to delve into it, but this will require time and the preparation of special equipment. What are your orders? We've no need of it, or we've need of it, or we don't. Oh, sweet, with Gavor it costs less wood and I get more money. And it's a golden chest, hello! Neat. Ooh, there's a morale shrine up there. Nothing else here, right? Look at me tracking mud and gunk around. Disgusted. for right now. Enough guardians. Fortress in the swamp. 
Nilfgaardian soldiers quickly realize that Angren is nothing short of a hellscape. That's why they did whatever possible to avoid being stationed here. As a result, the Empire's swamp outposts were largely staffed by outcasts, fresh recruits, and those at the mercy of Nilfgaardian military tribunal. Destroy all the enemy units. Hint, Meeve is prepared to deliver the final blows. Puzzle question rules. Custom deck. Threes and ones. A random recruit into an inexperienced general. They don't have their loyal ability now anymore. Okay. Five damage now. Abolista, your command. I'm a monster. Or Okay. One man's battlefield is another man's ripe patch for harvest.
One bolt on my name. Give me a time. Abolista, your command. I'm a warrior. Give me a target. That does it. There. Look at all that loot. It's just outside here. Let me get all this stuff first. From Duke Ardalev Dahi to Colonel Leon Tifrin. Colonel, I entrust to you a mission requiring the utmost discretion. Count Caldwell's usefulness to us is nearing its end. Good. He must soon be removed, but in such a way as to avoid causing fear among our other allies in the north. Given the Count's well-known passion for wine and spirits, poison should prove most effective. We should put the plan into action once Queen Meave is no longer an issue. That will never happen. It shouldn't be long now. Wait my signal. Oh, good. They're going to kill him anyway. Hello, message board. Yep, I know that's down there. The treasure out here. Things to do. Going to get that. Sail away on the little boat now. Where you at, treasure? There you are. Hello. Gimpy Gerwin. It doesn't look very gimpy. He did have a peg leg or something. Like that. Or the muck and the gunk. Oh, nothing else. Okay, so that way is to Caldwell. Gonna investigate this little town action up here too. Nothing there, eh? Hello, strangely normal town. See you, peddler. Beware! The bloody mistress despises those who kill her servants. Ugh, we're only winter here. Swamp would freeze over. Kill the skeeters dead. Milady, you have a tick behind your ear. Looks he's about to burst. Ew. Ugh, we're only winter here. Swamp would freeze over. Kill the dead. I just live right next to this bubbling morass here. Disgusting. 
Milady, a traveling merchant has stopped in our camp. He has invited you to view his wares. What's your reply? Oh, I got all kinds of money. Heck yeah. Sweet. Oh, I can almost build the palisade. Nice. My queen, a local peasant by the name of Gazimir, has requested an audience. He says he's found a curious object in the elven ruins. Claims it emits a magical aura of some sort. I cannot vouch for the truth in his words, but the man himself seems soaked in an aura of hooch. Your grace, do you wish to buy this so-called artifact? You know, we're going to steal it because there's that morale-boosting shrine back down there so my men can get sad and then they can get happy again. Give me that, you old drunken fool. Hey, lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, stuff's actually like sinking and floating. Gross. See, here it is. Now my men are happy again. That workshop is all buffed up. Nice. See, I've got this left. And this. Just need another. A couple hundred wood, I'll get that. Oh, that's the elven ruin down there. Right? Yes. Just double check. No big treasure here. A nice paved entryway next to a tree. There's nothing like that here. Alright, let's go up to these next points of interest across this bridge. Your Grace. Charts say we near Tuzli. Angren renders charts helpless to show the way, I fear. Soon we shall halt to sight our exact position. We will know then if our path is true. As you wish, Your Grace. I was just trying to help me, lady. All kinds of stuff here. I'm going up first just to make sure I don't miss anything up there. A little creepy tree. Last time I investigated a creepy tree, it was not good. Actually, the last two times. Another morale shrine. Okay. That's all that's on that little island. Hello, question mark. Festival! And the horsemen beside Jesus. her exchanged a perplexed glance. They'd heard the song clearly, both its tune and its verse. Whoever had hollowed it had to be close, and given their diction rather well oiled. <laughs> Moments later, a hamlet appeared to the Lyrian's tired eyes. A great bonfire blazed at its center. Around it danced peasants, barefoot, giggling, hooting, joyful and carefree. One by one, they noticed the queen. Soon, all were silent, huddled together, children peering from behind their backs. Hmm. I got a dog. Fear not, said Meave. We mean you no harm. What do you celebrate? A lad's grooming? Nuptials? Nay, my lady. Hell yes. The gods have been kind. 
filled us nets and snares with game. Come time, we thank them. Yes. You've things to be thankful for. We do, my lady. And we's poor folk. So a queen. Well, you must as well. Your Majesty, stay tonight. Feast with us. There'll be music and plenty of room by the fire. I have a feeling something bad's gonna happen because it always does, but you know what? Let's stay. <sighs> Why not? Began me, dainty Don't eat me. dismounting. We all deserve some respite, I suppose. The Lyrians needed no convincing. With astonishing haste, they removed mail and helmets, then oh eagerly joined in the fating and dance. Please don't knock my guy's heads in. Amidst the trilling of flutes, fifes, and fiddles, all those gathered reveled until dawn. They could rest at last, forget about Nilfgaard and the many beasts that prowled among the reeds. They'd long mm. remember that night. The carefree laughter, peasant maids whirling in dance, the ale cold as a mountain spring, and the bread they crisped over the fire. Mm. One exchange in particular etched itself into the Queen's mind, oh an exchange she overheard. Not a little, not even a teeny tiny bit. I'll say it again, it's not your concern. Of course it's not. Wouldn't be so damn curious if it were. So be it. Keep your silence. But um, those eyes like the summer sky, that hair like waves of grain. I see the way you gape. What are you doing, Odo? What do you two speak of? <laughs> uh, your Majesty. <laughs> Couldn't have answered that better myself. You've been checking out these peasant girls. Who does Reynard gape at? <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> the new ballista, what else? Ah, oh, what a piece of work. Pure art, I say. Can't tear your eyes away for an instant. He's been checking me out, damn it. Of course it's the ballista. Don't lie to me. Haven't you two held enough from me already? Yeah, that's fair. Don't play me for a fool. What's this about? Me, honestly, you do better to... Ha! <laughs> it's a private matter, Your Grace. One of the heart, you might say. Oh, you dweebs. If you'd allow it, I'd rather not share the details of our conversation. All right. I'll leave you to discuss whatever men discuss. Consider <laughs> me gone. Ha! 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 Me turned and walked back to the fire, sat down on an old stump. Ha! That was close. I... Shh! <laughs> And the faintest of smiles crossed her lips. Me expected idiots. the villagers to request recompense for their welcome. <laughs> Yet the peasants made not the slightest mention of coin, and the queen was much moved by their kindness. Once again, those with the least had proved the most willing to share. The Lyrians nice. did not assemble come the morn. The force marched off in the afternoon, unshaven, unbathed, disheveled. Gross. Not normally one to overlook contempt for discipline. That day, Meave understood even soldiers needed to let their guard down. At times. Nice. Wow. What a nice little event. Admire, admire, ample harvest year. For our mistress all meet be kneeled. Round my garden appeared an eager leech, and I offered a drink, offered a drink. <laughs> Round my garden appeared an eager leech, and I offered a drink, offered a drink. <laughs> and my Oakley Bard, Oakley Bard, play us more, you pros. 
Sing again, we'll dance a bit, and then we'll fix your nose. <laughs> ugly bad, ugly bad, ugly bad. Ugly. Okay, I only knows one song. That was a nice little event. going on with this creepy tree out here. Ugh. Hello, creepy tree. Sensing a limp in her mount's gait, Meave uh -oh. ordered the column to walk. Oh, no. There was a thorn in her mare's hoof, burrowing deeper with every step. The horse whinnied and pulled her leg away, but Meave knew how to calm her. She stroked the mare's cheek, whispered slow words in her ear, she then extracted the thorn without difficulty. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, said the druid from behind Meave's back. Yet this is where our paths diverge. Okay. We've a modest gift to thank you for the road shared, and for your aid at the obelisk to the marsh gods. Meave Me. wished to respond, but the druids had turned toward the woods, their satchels slung over their shoulders. The queen waited till they were out of sight to open the bundle. Their gift was by no means modest. Nice. Hey, thanks, Druids. The trees no longer wish us here. They call for someone else. This land is sick, defiled by a parasite that grows hungrier each day. Mm -hmm. Corruption flows from Isgith. It's there an evil lurks. The trees no longer wish us here. All right, I'm going to build that palisade. Go. That diggity. And now we just got one more thing to build, and we'll have upgraded literally everything. I only need 2,000 gold for that, so trading post. See if I can get up there. Stop there. What's up, Trey? Hey, Grace. One of our scouts has discovered a tree hollow with gold and precious stones. When he reached in to fetch one, all he got back was his own bloody stump of a hand. Oh, God! There's something inside that tree, and it's got some very sharp teeth. Oh, man. Ake would have got it. Uh. Sorry, fellas, but uh, there's a morale boosting thing up there, so. Thanks for the money. I'm sorry you got sad. Right around the corner is Cal Caldwell, so... Go pray at the shrine to get our morale sky rocket high. And with any luck... After this battle, we should be able to afford that last upgrade. Because usually there's all kinds of good... good rewards after a... nice long story battle. Alright, buddy. I'm coming for you. Caldwell, you douchebag. The Ly Lyrians and Nilfgaardians join the forces. Oh, shit. 
schnapps. Okay, nope. Well, I'm gonna turn back. We're gonna try and find where that uh where'd that treasure be? Right there. How have I not explored this area before? Fast travel. That's exactly where it is. I probably didn't even see this little place. There it is. Gotcha. What's up, Reindeer? Alright, there's the last golden chest. Yeah, I remember being in this area. Oh, I probably didn't have, uh... Might not have had the map at that point. on the map is this bridge. I'm definitely not going to waste any wood on it now. Uh, let's try going over here just to make sure I can't cross there. It was down. goes into the marshy goodness. Okay. Well, it's almost time to fight with Caldwell. Let's fast travel here. I'll take a very quick break and return shortly. And we're back. Now, I should have all the golden chests at least. And I'm, I mean, pretty damn sure I've hit everything I can. It was all up in here, all up in there. Did that. Did that. It's 
all the things on that half of the map. Oh boy. Hope this isn't where I get my scar. Seven five six seven seven. Let's do In Angren swamps, one can easily lose one's way. Thick fog fills the air. Paths end without warning. Dense thickets obscure the distance. The sole way to determine one's position is to climb a tree and peer out over the canopy. This duty fell to Meave scouts, while the force halted below. During one such delay, Meave caught the words she'd longed to hear. Majesty! Tuzla Castle! It's tower! I see it! To her soldiers' astonishment, Meave cast off her gauntlets and started up the nearest trunk. <laughs> she longed to see the castle for herself, but then she would know sweet vengeance was at hand. The climb proved tricky, as the trunk was slippery and the branches, run through with rot, were frail. Yet Meave showed herself to be skillful and spry. As a child, she had loved to scale trees, much to her governess' dismay. Meave looked out to see a mighty stone tower outlined against the horizon. Legend holds Tuzla Castle was to have had three such bastions. Yet King Ragbard, the fort's benefactor, had forsaken the effort when yet another stone transport simply sank into Angren's boggy roads. It was a moment of respite for Meave, a moment of quiet joy. She breathed and tasted air free of the bog stench. She took in silence undisturbed by the hum of mosquito swarms. And she relished her prospects. The coming battle against Caldwell. I'm gonna cut him up. Well, we're going for it. The soldiers stood exhausted and filthy, many with raspy coughs, all sick of the meager gruel. But with the command to advance, a new strength sparked within them. Their step was lively, a fire burned in their eyes, each hoping to spill Caldwell's entrails, then dash them upon the fort walls. Yet as oh, yeah. they drew near the stronghold, perched atop a stone aisle, their verve dwindled. Enthusiasm waned. What? They had taken fortresses with thicker walls, taller towers, and manned by more men. Mm. Yet they'd never seen nor laid siege to a fort standing on land so ill-suited. To rush the bulwarks through waist-deep mud. Was this even possible? Prove I was no fool to keep you at my side, said Meave, turning to Gascon and Reynard. A slaughter I must avoid. How will I do it? Your Grace, began Reynard. Set our machines to sling boulders. At the west wall, it's weakest. Tis our best chance at a breach. Our men will need cover, added Gascon. Reeds we must harvest and burn. Smoke will cloak us. Conceal us from the castle's defenders. Good, agreed the queen. Now get to work. Let's see if I'd thrown them away. I'd just like run through the mud. Amidst billowing blue smoke, Lyrian footmen rushed through the breach wrought by Reynard's catapults. Though she had yet to forgive her companions, Meave had to admit they'd given her sound advice. This. Let's do it. Caldwell, you piece of crap. <clears throat> He's got a Pomeranian. I'll spare the dog. The Siege of Tuzla. Caldwell was nowhere to be seen, which hadn't surprised me even the least. The Count never fought on the front. Instead, he preferred to stay back to galvanize the men by shouting encouragement and brandishing his sword, a blade that rarely tasted blood. Well, I mean, that's what a, a general would do. <clears throat> Story battle, short in battle. Let's cut this traitor up. Spare his dog, though. We got the castle gate. Boost a random ally by two and good armor. Destroy all palisades and boost all enemies. So we're taking out the gate. Catapult parts. And thick fog on an allied row, which give all allies on it immune. Transform catapult parts into catapult. Yep. 
I like that. Yep. Yep. We're going with that. I've come for your head. I knew you'd come. Your lofty pride presages another dramatic fall. Shut up. You douche. Wise choice. Give me a time. Ah, should have listened to me, old lady. We must trust each other. We must exploit the breach in their fortifications, Your Grace. Coin never stinks, no matter how rank the pouch. Their archers shouldn't be any more trouble. Wow. Life is mine now. Army's a waste of time for one like me. Watch your heads! <laughs> Elven Flatley.
Nice. Thing about slings, they hide well. All my units are immune, so he can't do anything. Okay, well... I'll take that. Okay, let's see what you got, Caldwell. For the last! Yeah! March on, march on. Hey, you got nothing, Caldwell. No one touch him! The count is mine! Oh, yeah, you're gonna die. Many of Meave's victories have been immortalized in poetry and song, but not the fall of Tuzla. Lyrians fought Lyrians. Brothers killed brothers in rain and mud midst a cursed swamp. Certainly nothing to inspire a bard. Near the battle's end, Meave stormed the great stone tower to which Caldwell had fled. The queen ascended the stairs, dealing blow after blow, blood cascading down in her wake. She reached the top floor to find the Count waiting, with no intention to defend himself. If it's mercy you expect, you'll be sorely disappointed. Mercy? I know you all too well for that, Meave. Ever vindictive and cruel. Shut up. All this from a paragon of knightly virtues. You stabbed me in the back, Coldwell, and used Willem to do so. My son! Who agreed without a moment's hesitation? Forsaken by your own soul, your flesh and blood. What's that say about you? Shut up, Caldwell. Oh, you tread on thin ice. Choose your next words carefully. Just kill him. Spare me your threats. You'll kill me all the same. Indeed. Death can come in many ways, Count. Some quick, some slow. My, my. How you strut and vaunt. Terribly sure of yourself. Perhaps too sure. Oh, God. Your castle is mine. I've crushed your force. I dare say no, I'm not. Precisely my point. Don't you see? The Empire's not one army. It's dozens, hundreds. It's what I strove to knock into that thick dome of yours. Alas, you're too much a dullard. Soon as I'd learned you'd crossed into Angren, I sent for reinforcements. They'll be here soon. Three regiments, armed to their teeth. <laughs> I'll smash them too. Nilfgaardians seem ever to have the upper hand, yet I find the means to defeat them. Not this time, Meave. Nilfgaard comes in numbers. Ten Imperial footmen to each and every one of yours. You'll not win, nor can you flee. Do you know why? Enlighten me. I dare you. You're going to trap me in this tower? But one bridge leads to Tuzla. As it happens, I ordered it raised as you laid siege. The swamps around the castle are too deep to cross. Try to rebuild the bridge, the Imperial troops will arrive before you can finish. Your men, they'll slay as you watch. Then they'll wring your neck. And that was Xavier building that bridge. I wouldn't be so pleased were I you. You won't live to see this outcome. I know that. But I take heart in the truth. Though the castle you've seized and will likely kill me, I've won. 
outsmarted you, Meave. Twice now. And you know what? It wasn't even that hard. With those words, with his arrogance and contempt, Caldwell had gone too far. The Queen mm -hmm. gripped his shoulders, pushed. Caldwell stumbled backwards, then tripped out the window. A blood-chilling shriek filled the courtyard, then broke off abruptly. Now fool me thrice. Try. Meave slapped the dust from her hands. The traitor had met a deserving end at last. Yet this was no time to revel in the Count's demise. If Caldwell had spoken the truth, the Queen and her army were in grave danger. Meave scouts quickly confirmed the traitor's claim. The bridge was indeed in flames, and Nilfgaardian regiments were advancing from the south. Crap. Now to confirm if there was truly no other route by which they could flee. The Queen ordered her men to ask the local peasants. One of their number, a stable hand who'd lived near Tuzla all his life, claimed a secret path led out the back of the stronghold. Nice. King Ragbard himself ordered it built. Adam dropped great stones into its swamp, one after another, like beads on a string. Bitter water covers them, so you can't see now to start. You can make them out if you go proper slow, though. What is it? The stones. They lead to Isgith. And there, my lady, lurks an evil worse nor any black-clad army. What? A beast of some sort? Some say beast. Others, God. Gernikora, they call her. And you'll yet see, my lady. Isgith shines red with your blood. Hey, I've got that sword. A silly tale to frighten children, Meave thought at first. Then paused. For something about the man's voice made his every word believable. None too encouraging, yet preferable to certain death. Tell me, from Iskith, will we reach the banks of the Yoruga, near Red Lobindon, perchance? Aye, Your Majesty. You need but head north. And pray all along the way. Soon, Meave stood where the stable hand had said she should, at the edge nice. of a vast marsh. Carefully, she dipped a foot into the broth and probed for solid ground. Sure enough, she found stone. One cautious step, then another. Meave slowly strode off towards Isgith. Reinforcements. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, yeah. Revenge is great. Let's see what we got here. Reports. Letter from Abdahi. To Palatine Caldwell from Duke Ardal Abdahi. I've denied your request to return to Lyria. Admittedly, your argument that, as a young ruler, King Villain needs the support of an experienced statesman is entirely grounded. I assure you, however, that if the need arises, I shall personally advise the king. At the present moment, your talents are more useful than Angren. As you know, the Emperor places great import upon the timely delivery of building materials to our shipyards. I thus advise you to make meeting his expectations your priority. No delays, no matter the reason, will be tolerated. Well, he was also going to kill him. Excuse me. And I can make my final upgrade. And check out that reinforcements card. Workshop. 